What's up guys, Tommy with Studio Sins here. Happy that you stopped by today because I'm gonna be taking a look at five fragrances that I have given my first impressions on already. In other words, today is an opinion refresher for five designer fragrances that I've looked at in the past. So that and more is coming your way, so stay tuned. Yeah, Welcome back everyone and welcome to my five designer fragrances first impressions refresher. That's a mouthful to basically mean that, you know, sometimes it's good and I think even healthy to take a look at your opinions, your belief systems when it comes to certain things and in particular today fragrances and see if you feel the same way that you originally did when you first tried them out. So we're going to take a look at these five fragrances from a fresh perspective and see if my opinions have changed at all. The first fragrance that I want to revisit is a Davidoff fragrance fragrance and it's a new release called Cool Water Reborn. Taking a brief look at the notes that make up the fragrance, Cool Water Reborn has rosemary, galbanum, and vetiver. And basically what I said in my first impressions was that I it, it is reminiscent of the original Cool Water except a little bit more subdued, a little bit less spicy, and a lot more soapy sudsy. In fact I talked a little bit about galbanum, how it's reminiscent of a pine and how it's kind of evergreen, has a kind of evergreen overtones and a piney scent. And that kind of impacts the fragrance overall and gives it that sudsy feel. But what I couldn't have known back then was that this is very much like one of those early movies that Nick Cage starred in, Gone in 60 Seconds. That's right, it is terrible performance. In fact, one of the things that I discovered is I tried Reborn on my left hand and cool water on my right hand. And after I was done videoing my first impressions later on, I was like, I could still smell cool water, but Reborn was gone, poof, in the wind, gone into the ether of all those fragrances that perform terribly. You're better off steering clear of Reborn and just getting, and I think I even said this in my first impressions, you're, you're better off if you want a more refined aquatic cool water, get cool water parfum. If you want something that's a little bit divergent from the cool water but better than reborn get cool water intense you're much better served avoiding reborn because of the terrible performance of the fragrance and we're not used to that in cool water cool water even as an inexpensive fragrance has always done pretty good in the arena of sillage this one does not all right let's take a look at the second fragrance that i want to revisit and that is burberry hero i actually rewatched all my first impressions for all of these so i'm not going to show any of it here but i'm just going to kind of recap it now, before i launch into what i said in my first impressions and whether i still agree with that or not let's take a look at the notes that are in burberry hero Burberry Hero has bergamot, black pepper, juniper, and it's got three different kinds of cedars. It's got Atlas Cedar, Himalaya Cedar, and Virginia Cedar. So with those kind of fragrant notes, what you're thinking in your head is that this is going to be an extremely woody fragrance. But what you're left with, and what I said in my initial impressions I still stand by, is just a lightly woody fragrance. You know, for three different kinds of cedars, you would think that you would have this pungent, a little bit heavier cedar oriented fragrance, but that's not really what you're getting. It's a safe fragrance. In other words, there's nothing different about it. There's nothing challenging about it. And therefore it's just pretty generic and to be honest, pretty boring. Now I didn't necessarily know that it was gonna turn out to be a relatively boring or generic fragrance in my first impressions. I basically stated that there's nothing in the fragrance that's really selling me on it and I stand by that today. I also assumed that the fragrance wouldn't be very changeable, meaning that the dry down wouldn't be that drastically different from the open. And that's very true other than the fact that the dry down tends to be even slightly more generic and slightly more boring than the open is. The open at least has a little bit of pepper and juniper going on with some of those three lingering cedars in the background. The dry down has nothing really to offer to promote it. So my final consensus on Burberry Hero is just lacking any kind of creativity, any kind of inventiveness. There's nothing new and exciting or fresh about it at all. And it does what it does relatively simplistically and, and a little bit generically. Now I'm saying all this because Burberry Hero, the Eau de Parfum has been released and I think it is gonna be better because it's got a lot more stuff in it. It's got a lot more resins in it to promote it as a near gourmand kind of fragrance, a darker or richer aspects to it. So instead of getting Burberry Hero, if you're interested in it whatsoever, I would go for the Eau de Parfum version when it drops in price because 130 bucks 
for a 100 ml bottle. It's just too much to pay for a designer fragrance that is a Burberry fragrance in my estimation. So again, final consensus, my opinion hasn't really changed. In fact, it's just been solidified. This is just a slightly generic, boring kind of lightly woody fragrance when it should have been an overtly cedar oriented masculine kind of fragrance. Next up is a fragrance from Emporio Armani in the Stronger With You line that is Stronger With You Only. Now Stronger With You Only is one of those that you know you have these expectations because every single flanker in the line has always had something to offer always brought something to the table that's just really good pursuing even further the gourmand fragrance DNA that is Stronger With You. Stronger With You Only I feel like was supposed to be the summertime version of the fragrance. But what are the fragrant notes that make up Stronger With You Only? Stronger With You Only features grapefruit, lavender, geranium, vanilla, glazed or sweet chestnuts, and labdanum. Now I said in my initial impressions that this was trying to be the spring and summer version of the Stronger With You DNA. I still kind of agree with that, but what I don't agree with in my initial impressions was that Stronger With You Freeze is the better spring and summer version. I've had the chance to wear this a lot more and I actually really, really like it. Another thing that I said that I want to modify just a bit was that it wasn't quite as rich as what you might expect it to be and in terms of the Stronger With You scent profile, you know, the Stronger With You DNA, that you could tell it was a Stronger With You flanker, but it was just like Stronger With You light. While that's true to a degree in the dry down of the fragrance is a lot more bold than you might think it is. It's just really, really good. And I feel like it stands up a little bit better than Stronger With You Freeze as a summertime version of the Stronger With You DNA. So. I'm, I'm modifying my impressions just a bit. I stand by everything that I said in my initial impressions other than modifying the fact that I think this is really a much better summer version of the Stronger With You DNA than you might expect, specifically in the dry down and the sillage that it creates. I've also discovered, oddly enough, it's a really nice bedtime fragrance. Like when you're ready to go to bed, you're fresh out of the shower and you kind of want something on to go to sleep with, you know, something that's going to be pleasant, something that's going to send you into dreamland and that your partner will also very much appreciate your significant other can enjoy without it being overbearing. Stronger With You Only is a really nice offering for bedtime. Next up, I'd like to revisit a Hugo Boss fragrance in the Boss Bottled line, and that's the new release Boss Bottled Marine. I think my bias was showing a little bit because I will admit I really like to find fragrances that have a very fresh, crisp apple note in them, especially when it's done really well. And of course, apple is one of those fragrance notes that's in most of the Boss Bottle fragrances and, and even Hugo Boss because that's kind of their claim to fame as like a apple tart kind of background note in, in most of their fragrances, especially in the Boss number six. The notes that are in Boss Bottled Marine are apple, mint, cinnamon, clary sage, patchouli, and cashmere wood. Cashmere wood? Is there a cashmere forest out there somewhere where they're chopping down trees? <laughs> cashmere wood is very simply a polycyclic musk similar to Isoe Super. In fact, I think the person that created Isoe Super did the same for cashmere wood and cashmere, and they're basically the same thing. So it's just a heavier, a little bit more comforting kind of musk that is used in modern fragrance. It's put to good use, I think, in this fragrance. Overall, I gave Boss Bottled Marine a very positive kind of first impressions because that's kind of the initial impression that it leaves on you. It's just a very nice kind of a iced apple, minty, light aquatic kind of fragrance that's ported from the Boss Bottled scent profile. But what I couldn't have known about it is that similar to Cool Water Reborn, it's co-starring in Gone in 60 Seconds because that's how long it lasts. It has terrible performance. Now, a lot of the Boss Bottle line suffer a little bit. A lot of Hugo Boss fragrances suffer in the performance arena just a bit. Uh, some are a little bit better than others. This is not one that is one of those better than others. It's a kind of a worse than most. You know, I really like Boss Bottle Night, but it doesn't have great performance, at least for me. This is similar, but even worse. It's just very ethereal, like a mist. It's here in the morning, gone in the afternoon. <laughs> And not even that long, you know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say this is even three hours. It's a, It's probably just below the three-hour mark. And so, you know, there are place for fragrances that have terrible performance. If you're looking for a fragrance that you just really like, the initial impression that you get straight out of the bottle in the open, and you want it to last just a few hours and to be gone, this is your guy. I do like the apple note, but if you want something that has a really nice 
realistic Apple Note in it that has great performance, then you might want to go for something like Armani Code Absolute or Absolute Gold, either one. Absolute Gold is a bit more fizzier, fresher, but um, both of those are fantastic and have that nice Apple, crisp Apple note in the open as well. Unfortunately, the final consensus on Boss Bottle Marine is that I would just get another Boss Bottle fragrance or an Armani fragrance. The only reason that I would recommend owning this is if you're a completionist and you can get it at a really, really good price. Otherwise, Boss Bottle Marine is gonna be one that overall I'd recommend just kind of avoiding. Well, the last of the five fragrances that I want to revisit to see if my opinion has changed or I've got anything additional that I wanna to add to my first impressions is a Mont Blanc fragrance. It is Mont Blanc Legend Red. Now the red bandwagon is kind of an eventuality for all designer houses because they all wanna jump on that. Gotta have a red fragrance, a red genre fragrance for specifically for the holidays or for whatever season they're creating the fragrance for and it's usually supposed to be a kind of a, a spicier version of the original DNA and that's the hole that Mont Blanc Legend Red was supposed to fill but does it do it successfully and how did I feel in my first impressions well firstly let's take a look at the notes that make up Mont Blanc Legend Red Mont Blanc Legend Red is a combination of blood orange and grapefruit and cardamom in the top in the heart you've got cedar juniper berry and clary sage and it rests on a base of mahogany wood, atlas cedar, and tonka bean. For the sake of time, I'm gonna say straight up that I feel pretty much exactly the same as I originally did about Mont Blanc Legend Red. I didn't give it a glowing first impressions. I said basically that it's just too generic and it, there's nothing in it that is different enough to recommend it as a fragrance in the Legend line of fragrances. That there are a few in the Legend line that are definitely worth owning and that Legend Red wasn't specifically worth owning. In fact, th this is one of those that I keep coming back and spraying on my arm or spraying on my hand and being like, am I missing something? Is, you know, why, why is it that I don't really care for this? And the simple fact is they're not utilizing the fragrant notes that they have in the fragrance enough. There's just not enough in it for it to be very different from Mont Blanc Legend. You spray Mont Blanc Legend on your left hand or right hand, you spray this on the opposite and allow just a bit of time, even the open is fine, but you can allow some time for it to dry down and smell both of them. There's really not a ton of difference. The biggest difference is that this has a bit more citrus kind of overtones. The blood orange, you know, that's it. That's literally it, the blood orange. It just smells just a bit more citrusy and less leathery in the background. Jimmy Choo Urban Hero, the gold edition, definitely utilizes blood orange to where you know you're getting a very citrusy blood orange fragrance that lasts into the dry down. The blood orange in this pretty much goes away and the dry down you're left with just a light legend-esque kind of fragrance. So overall, this is one that I would, even if you were to get it at a really good price, can't really, there's not enough different about it for me to be able to recommend it. And in terms of the performance, it's just moderate. It performs moderately well, similar to the original legend. So unless you're just wanting a Mont Blanc legend with a bit more citrus in it, there's really nothing more to recommend Mont Blanc Legend Red. Well guys, that's it for my five fragrances that I wanted to revisit, kind of re-up my opinion on, see if, I, if my opinion has changed. I can say realistically that most of my opinions have remained intact. The only modifications that I've been able to make are where the performance is better or the fragrance usage overall is a bit better than I expected, as in the case with Stronger With You Only, a bit better of a spring and summer fragrance than I first initially you know, kind of gave it credence for. So let me know your opinion of these fragrances, if you tried them out or own any of them, or if you have a fragrance that you initially had an opinion of that was changed over time, let me know what those are as well in the comments below. Thanks so much though for stopping by and checking out today's video. And as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and I'll see you tomorrow.